Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. Today I have a pretty huge second hand book haul to share with you. I'm aware in comparison to a lot of other people's book hauls, this isn't that massive, but it really is for me. And I went book shopping to celebrate the fact that I'm starting a new role at the publishing company, Bolted Books, that I work at. I am now their head of marketing, so I got a promotion. And the first thing I do when I have any good news, or bad news in fact, or, to, or no news really, is to buy books. And so I took myself off to my favourite second-hand bookshop in South London. It's actually a National Trust bookshop, which to be honest is often some of my favourite second-hand bookshops. And it's the stable bookshop in Malden Hall Park in Malden. And it not only is it beautiful, it's this tiny bookshop um, that is crammed with so many brilliant books. And every time I go, which is quite a lot, um, they have new books in. I don't think I've ever really gone when they've still got the same kind of books on the shelves. It really constantly kind of revolves. There's always new stock coming in. And also because I tend to donate quite a lot of my books there. So quite a lot of the books are already familiar, but that's because I own them. They just have a really good mix of kind of very commercial fiction to literary fiction and classics. And, um, and now quite a lot of the books on my bookshelves are actually books I bought from them. And so to celebrate, I obviously got a bigger stack than normal, but because they are a pound, I feel like it would be rude not to buy as many as I could take home. And I certainly did that. So I'll share the books, but I also wanted to share another thing that isn't a book that I bought to celebrate my promotion. In fact, it wasn't one thing, it was free. When I got my promotion, I knew I wanted to treat myself to a new bag because so many of the bags that I own just don't fit in my camera, the, my chunky camera that I'm actually filming on right now with lenses and I've been looking everywhere for a bag that does but still feels kind of a bit vintagey and I decided on um, getting a bag from Zatchel's and if you're familiar with York you'll be used to seeing their shop uh, in York and they are obviously a UK handmade kind of company and I've been wanting them for a really long time and I decided to cheat myself in one of their sales and I have now fallen in love. This is their barrel bag and I put it in Chestnut and I just, I love it, I think it's so beautiful, but it's actually like full of stuff, but so I can fit my camera in here, um, and my phone, and a water bottle, I can fit my purse in here, everything, right now, I've got a water bottle, what else in here, I always realise how I say water bottle is so British, um, for, and also a book, book that I'll talk about in a minute. Um, so anyway, I bought this bag, but I thought, I originally bought it just as a camera case, and it was like too big just to have a camera case, and so I was like, oh, I don't know, I'm going to buy a different one, I, I was thinking at the time to return this, because even though I thought it was beautiful, I didn't think it was what I kind of wanted, and so then I decided to get a smaller version, so this is their bow bag and plus, and I thought I'll get the smaller version just as a camera case, and so I got their little bow bag in the regular size in red, which I loved, um, so originally I was going to return this and then I took this out on a trip and realised just how much I can fit in this bag and how it still keeps its structure and I very quickly fell in love so I sent them an email thinking I was going to return it and then when they emailed me back they were like wait if you don't like it we can change we can change anything like everything is customizable I added on the um magnets rather than having it as a normal buckle because I thought I'm going to be getting my camera all the time so I want really quick and easy access um but they were so nice to me that I definitely obviously went ahead and bought the little one and then when the little one arrived and this one does fit my camera in and my phone in and I use this now as a camera case if I don't need to pick anything else because this this bag obviously fits my entire life in it. It was actually the first time I'd ever gone out without a rucksack recently because this fit my water bottle in and for me that's like revolutionary. So I've been kind of alternating using this bag since I both got them but I then realised just how much I'd fallen in love with this red colour and so a new bag has just arrived. I've taken it out of its packaging but I haven't removed all its labels. So I then have decided to get the big one in red as well um, and I just think I'm literally in love and when I realise how much I love these brow bags mainly because I just don't think it's a style we see that often it feels like an old fashioned like binocular bag like it feels a bit different than the kind of the red satchel that I have and I personally love um, satchels and the satchels that the satchels do um, but I thought this was just a bit different 
and because I have, I knew I wanted to talk about them because this, this, all these bags, like I've got a little family now. I've got like a mum, dad and a baby. But I am just a little bit obsessed and especially because they can fit small paperback and um, my Kindle also fits in here. I thought that lots of you would be interested. And because of that, I actually asked Satchels if they wouldn't mind giving me a 10% off voucher and they have. Um, so you can use Fen 10 at checkout and all the details around that will be in the description of the video. I've actually never done a discount code before, but because I knew I wanted to talk about them and I want to I want to like everybody is that these bags exist I thought I might as well so please make use of it if you want um, but anyway now we'll have a slight digression a side step away from the bag um, to the books that I bought at the Morden Hall Stables bookshop I'll start with the classics and this is Lorna Dune by R.D. Blackmore and it's a Wordsworth classic edition which actually really like the beautiful kind of painting on this edition but Lord of Dune is a book that's been on my radar for a really long time but it's also one of those classics which I actually find quite rare now nowadays it's one I don't know the story of at all and there is adaptations of Lorna Dune but they're not as famous as kind of obviously other period dramas so I love going into a classic where I actually don't know what's going to happen because so many of them are in just kind of, you know, we take them in by osmosis or we see them on TV, but this is a rare exception, I guess, for me. And I didn't even know this is a historical novel until I read the blurb. Um, and it's been one of those books that I have been meaning to read for a really long time and have just never, never had a reason to. I've just never seen a copy of it, really, even in a lot of bookshops. So when I saw this, I knew I had to pick it up. But please let me know if you've read this because I don't even know if people like it. Like, I really know nothing about it. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments if you've read it. Next I have Barchester Towers by Anthony Trollope. Now, I read The Warden a few years ago and didn't like it that much, but everybody I know who loves Trollope are people I really love and respect, and they've all said to me that The Warden is an introduction, you will love Barchester Towers. So when I saw it, I picked it up because I also feel like I would really like Trollope. And I did like The Warden kind of, in some aspects. So I feel like I need to give Trollope a uh, kind of a bigger and better shot with this novel. And this edition, one thing I really liked about it was the fact that it actually has kind of annotations by it from its last reader. I love picking up books that have been annotated because I feel like it's a really interesting reading experience where you're kind of, you're, you're entering in a dialogue with not only the writer and the novel, but also the last reader. Some of these annotations are also just quite intriguing. Um, so he's got, he has a wonderful way of writing himself into the story as narrator, which, because I don't know anything about the novel, is kind of, I was quite intrigued. I just really feel like I should be a person who likes Trollope, and I don't know what that means or really says about me, but I just feel it in my heart that I should like his writing, and so I'm going to give him another chance um, with the next novel in this series. Then I picked up Marriage by Susan Ferrier, which is a Scottish novel, which I have been recommended lots of times, actually, when, often when I'm speaking about Jane Austen or kind of liking a lot of kind of contemporaries of Jane Austen, people have always recommended me this and I've actually read very few Scottish novels, especially kind of very early 19th century Scottish novels, like I haven't read any to be honest um, and this is partly set in the Scottish Highlands and I really love um, Scotland as a place so I'm looking forward to reading this because I kind of want to expand um, the classics that I read um, so this is kind of a good place to start. There's actually a huge selection of Vargo books in the Stables bookshop which is kind of perfect for me because Vargo is one of my favourite publishers and I picked up Wave Me Goodbye Stories of the Second World War. I've probably mentioned it before in quite a lot of other videos but the Second World War especially the home front is one of my favourite periods in history to read about and so when I saw this I knew I had to get it because I haven't actually read much women writing about the Second World War at all and what I also really like about these kind of um, collections of work that Varga put together is that I'm always introduced to new writers that I might have not heard of and therefore I can always go away and then read some more of their writing um, so every time you discover someone new. There are some familiar names in here like Molly Panterdowns and Barbara Pym and Dorothy Parker but there's also just so many people that I've never heard of so um, I think when I kind of need a bit of a World War II fix, um, I've got the perfect book now. I also picked up a classic for my mum, which is this beautiful vintage edition of On the Beach by Neville Shute. This is one of my mum's favourite books and I just really love this edition and they always have really a lovely section of kind of vintage books. Um, and 
My mum, I've discovered, has always really liked depressing books and On the Beach is a book I will read eventually but for now um, I've just bought this to give her as a gift. I won't show you them all but I did end up buying the full Cancelic Chronicles collection. I already had book one at home but I got so excited when I saw these because it's becoming harder and harder for me to find these editions of the books and I really wanted the complete collection in the same edition otherwise I felt like I was going to have to rebuy book one just so they would all match which I know is a bit insane but that is how my mind works so I'm really happy happy to have the full set now. This was a complete impulse purchase on my side because I did not need this but this is The French Lieutenant's Woman by John Fowles which is one of my favourite books but it is a movie tie-in hardback with a picture of Meryl Streep's face on from the film and I just knew it had to come home with me. Um, the portrait is of Meryl Streep or Sarah Woodruff in the film of The French Lieutenant's Woman. I just saw it and quite a lot of these books just look like they've never been read but I just knew that Noah had to come home with me <laughs> so here she is. I feel like that book is the perfect example of just the weird and wonderful thing you can buy at this bookshop but I definitely have one weirder which um, I am sure many of you will not be thinking this would ever come in a book haul from me but I have a ladybird souvenir book of the royal wedding of Prince Charles or now King Charles and Princess Diana. Now <laughs> there was a Prince Andrew one which is, is still in the shop if you want to buy it. I certainly was not taking that home. Now I'm a socialist and don't believe we should have a monarchy but I love Lady Diana okay. I love Princess Diana. I don't know why I just always have. We're actually going to St Paul's this week so I knew I had to buy the book so I could relive the day even though I wasn't even born. I wasn't even born when they got married um but now I know this is not a good financial decision but it was a pound and this has brought me so much joy and I have already read it cover to cover and it was very interesting and I really love the Ladybird book so this is a Ladybird souvenir of the Royal Day which I now own. That is not a classic but maybe it is a classic, it's a classic in my mind. Then I've got a twist on a classic which is Death Comes to Pemberley by P.D. James and this has been recommended to me a lot recently because I've got really interested in reading crime fiction and I obviously love Jane Austen so it's the perfect combination. When I was in the bookshop I actually just fell in love with P.D. James's author note to this. I owe an apology to the shade of Jane Austen for involving her beloved Elizabeth in the trauma of a murder investigation, especially as in the final chapter of Mansfield Park Miss Austen made her views plain. Let other pens dwell on guilt and misery, I quit such odious subjects as soon as I can, impatient to restore everybody not greatly in fault themselves to tolerable comfort and to have done with all the rest. No doubt she would have replied to my apology by saying that had she wished to dwell on such odious subjects, she would have written this story herself and done it better. Um, which I just loved. Another crime novel I picked up was Disillusion by C.J. Sansom and this has been a novel that ever since I kind of talked about my love of Wolf Hall and Hilary Mantel in general and also crime fiction, I have had I would say almost daily recommendations for this series and I'm really looking forward to reading it and I do kind of like that in this um, video I kind of have two different historical crime pieces so they'll be really interesting to read but we all know how much I love the Tudor era and now how much I really like murder kind of murder mysteries or kind of crime novels I think this might be slightly darker than the ones I've read before because obviously I've literally read kind of golden age Agatha Christie that's it um but this kind of a combination of like my favorite time period and um history that I know and love and now crime um in a way similar to kind of um Jane Austen as well so I'm kind of just combining my loves and and giving them a bit of a twist if I ever did a list of all the books that booktubers made me buy this would be at the very top this is A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith and I think in so many of the people I love to watch on booktube this book always seems to be in their top favourites um, or is a book that is really widely read and maybe I've dreamt that, maybe it's just like two people but I've heard nothing but good things about this book. This was really just like an instant buy for me and I didn't even really read the blurb. I'm realising actually the blurb is mainly a review. Um, what does it say? A poignant and deeply understanding story of childhood and family relationships, which sounds perfect. Um, but yeah, it was just an instant kind of 
I need to read this, so I will read it. Another instant buy for me was called The Midwife, A True Story of the East End in the 1950s by Jennifer Worth. This is obviously the book that inspired the Called The Midwife series from the first book, and I think the second book in particular are very close to this series. I mean, reading this was basically like watching the first series. I'm just a few pages away from the end and I have enjoyed it. I don't know if I would read the second one but I'm glad that I have read it because I am such a big fan of the TV series um, and yeah I think it's a good for me to kind of take it off my TBR because I think I would always regret not having read it um, but now I have um, so yeah Call the Midwife. My last book might be a little bit of a surprise because it's a Catherine Cookson novel um, with this brilliant TV adaptation like tie-in edition with Catherine Zeta Jones on the cover from the adaptation of The Cinderpath um, and Catherine Cookson I have a really soft spot and kind of like a guilty pleasure but I don't like the word guilty pleasure. I don't really think of anything I enjoy as being a guilty pleasure but I have such fond memories of spending time up north with my grandma watching, reading Catherine Cookson novels and just talking about them. When you're reading Catherine Cookson novel or like watching them on the TV every page counts because someone's died, someone's drowning, someone's been shot this person, this person's run away, they've come back there is so much drama in every single page and the dialogue is just fast and the stories are just absolutely cracking like um, they're really good, they're very much of their own time, very much and but there is just a part of me that loves this type of storytelling and now I work on saga fiction at work and publishing so much of my love of storytelling and of drama comes from novels like this and it is a perfect connection to the adult I guess I became in terms of the books I work on and my career and it's just yeah I've just been having a bit of a moment so um The Cinderpath I've never actually read before um I have seen this series actually only recently so when I saw this I had to pick it up but I'm now I just also love these little editions of Catherine Cook's novels so I might kind of start a little wee collection of them um, but yeah, please let me know if any of you read like Catherine Cookson as a child because I know so many people just stole them off the library shelves or like their grandparents or their mother's shelves um, and I think especially if you are from a northern family or had, um, yeah, there's just such a big connection to the the world in which kind of Catherine Cookson is writing about um, and yeah, so really great fun but probably a novel you didn't think I'd ever mention on my channel. Um, but we like a bit of variety here, so um, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading it. Just gonna wait until the cats go to the loo. <laughs> you done, Freya. Good girl. So there are all the books and bags I've bought recently and I will leave you to enjoy a few clips of Walden in the Swing because it is such a beautiful part of London and it's one of my favourite places to go. Um, I also wanted to leave an emoji and I think maybe, I feel like it has to be a book emoji or a bag emoji and thinking of bags, if you do want to treat yourself to a bag please use my discount code which is FEN10 at checkout um, which is not sponsored but I, yeah, I wanted to talk about it. There's a recommendation for me. But I hope you enjoyed watching the video and picked up a few recommendations. But please let me know if you've read any of these books and leave an emoji to say hello in the comments. But now I'll enjoy you to just have a moment of spring. Mm -hmm.